lecture i will talk about cryptographical hash function after that i will start talking about <coughs> cryptocurrency uh, uh, cryptography algorithms rsa and elliptical curves as uh, i said before cryptocurrencies all have to uh, <coughs> uh, important uh, basis one is crowd as I said before proof of work uh, in fact proof of work is an idea to implement the role of crowd okay and the second is cryptography cryptographical hash functions cryptographical algorithms uh, and all uh, prepare the security of the cryptocurrencies okay uh, in last session uh, I have to talk about some cryptographical hash functions, especially MD2. As I said, MD2 is old and nobody use it uh, today because it was broken. And uh, as a coursework, I asked you to have a search about uh, a historical in fact, a historical review on different cryptographical hash functions, old cryptographical hash functions, uh, and uh, discussing about how they are broken. Uh, <clears throat> the most famous uh, cryptographical hash function, which are used in current cryptocurrencies are SHA family or SHA SHA is the, abbrevi uh, the abbreviation of secure hash algorithms uh, before starting uh, the session let me show you how use these uh, algorithms in Python so uh, we should use some libraries as you can see uh, my Jupyter please let me run the Jupyter I can share my screen. Can you? Okay. In the first, at first, have input a library. The name of the library is Hashlib. There are many uh, cryptographical functions implemented library. I think uh, in when you download Anaconda uh, knows This library but in the cases that you use a new library simply you can use this command pip of the library for example not only in this session but also in other sessions I uh, will use different kind of 
cryptographical uh, algorithms all okay I, I will add all that libraries were implemented in the cryptography uh, let me to Know how to resize? Let me take a header, take a line number. Enlarge the fonts. Sorry. Okay. So uh, today, introduce two libraries. working with different kind of hash actions the first one is hashlib okay so you simply write import hashlib then you must have an object or whatever you want whatever you like equal hashlib Ashley, at 156. SHA-256 is the most famous cryptographical hash algorithms, which is different uh, cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Okay? So, by this command, by this command now m is an object of type sha 256 now this object has a method update this method takes an input of type byte and generate its hash value okay so i want hash my name i want to hash my so this b converts the string vahid to a byte sequence okay up takes an input which its type is byte to convert an, an, an um, a string to byte you should put a b in front of that string okay so i put my name here so this command converts my name to a hash value based on sha 256 but um, I want to add another thing at that string and calculate the, the update m dot update now my family which is an space in front of it again I convert this to byte uh, maybe you say you could write something like this yeah that's true but uh, names now i want to calculate an string and later i notice that i should put something extra at the end of it in those cases you can another update method and put the uh, extra string uh, at the parameter update something like this now that means update the meaning uh, 
update this method update calculate hash value functions takes one input and generates its hash my first input is Vahid and the second is my family and, and update calculates its hash value and now I'll print to use the print command m is my object hash value uh, I convert this hash value to hexadecimal hex so this command prints the hash value as a hexadecimal format and then later on prints again that hash value in the byte format so if I run this simple pro program this is my name and family in fact the input was okay in, in, in the second part here again this part is a but instead of using two times update I just used one update but I put all the data as one parameter so this update takes just one parameter is family my family okay and again I have printed the hash value of the decimal format as binary format if I run it you can see the result is the same not surprising because uh, the data for uh, this two um, simple program was the same the, the input was the same you can put anything put your name put every string you want okay you know Hassan it's just an example I want to show you how to use this library how to use uh, these methods how to calculate hash values to say that you can put all this at all you don't have to hear me i think it's okay the system says me that everything is okay so check your uh system to be sure about problem Okay, let's go. Again, for uh, calculating, uh, calculating the hash values, you can use another library, cryptography. This one was hashlib. Okay, um, there is no difference, just the way of the representation is different. This is, this is, in he each hex di um, digit 
as you know is four bits four bits okay but here is exactly this data binary format in the byte format so it's byte it's it's equivalent in hexadecimal format okay both are uh, both are the same i want here i want to show you how to convert the this is a hexadecimal and bytes dot from hex you are converting a hexadecimal format to a bind uh, later we need this it's okay my internet is uh, unfortunately i think uh, some problem in your uh, side but everything is uh, recording after the class uh, the recordings and, and I'm sure everything is okay uh, so <clears throat> using this from hex we are converting a hexadecimal to its equivalent in byte format as I said we need these commands okay Uh, another library that uh, I will use it more than hashlib is cryptography. For using cryptography, you must write a command like this: pip install cryptography, and you should uh, have an internet connection. When you run this command, when you run this command, it's star here. Uh, um, in fact, tries to download and install, but in my system, this library was installed before. So you see something like this requirement already satisfied. Okay, for so for the first use, you must at first using this pip install cryptography, you must install this uh, library. This library has different parts for using hash functions, especially SHA 256, you should use cryptography hazmat primitives and from cryptography hazmat primitives you must import hashes okay just and now again i define an object with this command this is hashes library hashes hash which takes a parameter and that's the name of the algorithm use sha256 so now i have an using in this case both are both libraries are similar using update command i give my data for calculating the hash value my name my family but here you can't use hex digest like this you must finalize you by this command m dot finalize finalizes the hash value so digest now is the hash value i can simply print the digest or i 
can print the digest in the hex form by this digest.hex. Okay. If I run, both are the same. This is. This is. In the binary format, a byte format. As you can see, the same as the before, even though the uh, libraries are different, but since the algorithms are the same, both are SHA-256, so uh, not surprising, the output, the both outputs are the same, okay? And this is the hash value, the hash of my name, uh, hexadecimal format, and why it's called 256? Because output is 256 bits. Each digit is 4 bits. So, divided by 4 Uh, will be 64 digits it's a 64 uh, length string is 64 okay um, again you can convert this hexadecimal to buy I copy it I put it here But from hex you can convert a hat to by format again the third same because both are byte format okay these are the comments that later we will use uh, uh, we will use them in later uh, for calculating some cryptographical, uh, some crypto, uh, some cryptical uh, messages for encryption, decryption. Okay. Uh, you can um, use this without print. It's okay. Nothing new. Uh, you can use different algorithms not only SHA-256 you can use SHA-1 SHA-1 the output of the SHA-1 uh, is uh, smaller uh, I think the 100 and 60 bits 160 bits simply when you are using cryptography library or even when you are using hash library library you can change the name of the algorithm for example SHA-1 okay simply uh, obviously the output will be changed because the algorithm is changed okay Um, different SHA or SHA algorithms SHA-1 you can use SHA-1 output is 160 bits or you can use SHA-224 or SHA-256 which are 224 bits or 256 bits or you can 384 or SHA-512 not only it's a part of the name of the algorithm but also it's the size of the output in bits okay it is the size of example SHA 384 generates hash values uh, which has uh, a length of 
384. Okay, so this is you can put everything you want here. Okay, uh, so this is about. cryptographical hash functions uh, most of these are used this algorithm SHA-256 the could uh, it's working okay if you have any question please let me know otherwise uh, I will start uh, encryption a algorithm so till now I talked about cryptographical hash functions we saw MD2 different SHA algorithms and their associated libraries and commands in Python Please note, all are one-way functions. Function, who knows? What is the, when, when I say this algorithm one is a one-way function, what, what is mean? Yes, you cannot use it by reverse. For example, using the app, using this, you cannot guess the input. So it, it's one way function. Using the output, you cannot find or even you cannot guess what input. Okay. If you don't have any question, uh, uh, let me start the new topic. No question? Okay. Okay, now I want to talk about cryptography. What's my problem? My problem is, let me use the whiteboard. Uh, I'm here. Suppose that I'm Bob. Okay, here is Alice. Now, I want to send the message to Alice, but encrypted. Nobody like Eve. I don't want to know what's my message. Uh, cryptographical hash functions like RSA, uh, sorry, like SHA-1, SHA-256, don't work here. Why? For example, Bob cannot use uh, SHA-1 to encrypt his message and sending them uh, to Alice. Can you explain why? Here we need new algorithms. 
algorithms like SHA-256 doesn't work here. Who knows? My problem is, please note, my problem is Bob wants to send a message to Alice and Alice, I want, Bob wants Alice to read his message. But Bob wants nobody else like Eve can read its message. So he wants to encrypt the message and send the encrypted message to Alice. When Alice receives the encrypted message, uh, she must be able to decrypt the message and read the message. Okay, now my question is, why Bob cannot use an algorithm like SHA-256? What's the limitation? What's the problem with SHA-256 for encryption? For using as, a, as an encryption, SHA is a cryptographical hash function. It's not an encryption decryption algorithm. Why? What's the problem with SHA that we cannot use it as an encryption algorithm? What's the answer? The answer is very simple. No, no. A length is not the reason. Chi? No. Yes, exactly. I think Noor Adnan got the point as I said hash functions are one-way functions it means that okay Bob can simply hash his messages using SHA-256 and send the hash value to Alice but how Alice can decode it I said Bob wants to send the message to Alice and Alice must uh, be able to read the message but how okay so those algorithms like MD or SHA are hash functions one way for encryption and decryption we use another algorithms encryption decryptions One way, yeah, uh, hash functions are one way, okay? S since they are one way, we cannot use them for encryption and decryption. Bob can hash a message and send sends the message to Alice, but Alice cannot decode the hash value. As I said, it, it's one, it's a one way function. It's not possible to find the input from the output. So we need some new algorithms. One of the most famous algorithms is RSA algorithm. RSA is an encryption decryption algorithm. Okay. Another one is elliptical curve. In Bitcoin, elliptical curve encryption decryption algorithm is used so uh, in the current session and in the next sessions I will talk about RSA and elliptical curve uh, one of you asked what's the use of SHA-256 if it's one way? It's used beside 
encryption decryption algorithms for example for simple example everybody in the cryptocurrency must have a public and a private key okay everybody must have a public and private key and also everybody must have an address valid address all valid addresses must have the same structure so so uh, in most of the cryptocurrencies valid address is the hash value is the hash value of uh, of the public address okay so later later when i start talking about blockchain uh, i will uh, exactly um, explain what's the application of cryptographical hash functions what's the application of encryption decryption algorithms in the blockchain okay just let uh, now for now let's uh, understand how they work what are they okay in in the first uh, session in the first session i um talk about public key and private key and symmetric and asymmetric encryption decryptions uh, again suppose bob wants to send a message to alice okay and he doesn't want to know for example if what's the message so there are two different approaches one which is an old approach is called symmetric symmetric and the new approaches is asymmetric okay in asymmetric in, in symmetric approaches Bob locks the message with the key and Alice unlock that message with the same key for example suppose that this is the message hey and suppose that key is two and Bob uses a very very simple encryption algorithms Bob converts each character to another character which has an ASCII code uh, with the previous character plus two. I don't know what's the ASCII code of H, but two characters after H is J. Okay, two characters after E is G, a small G, and two character after Y again is A. Consider alphabets are circular. Okay. Uh, as a circle, consider 
the alphabets uh, on the environment of a circuit. Okay, so Alice receives JGA. Now, Alice using exactly the same key decrypt by using two characters before Bob used two characters after Alice used two characters before finds the message this is a very very simple example of a symmetric encryption in this approach there is only one kind of key both sender and receiver has the same key it, uh, this this kind of encryption is not so strong so from uh, at the end of year 79 new algorithms which are asymmetric are used what's an asymmetric encryption or decryption algorithm uh, in uh, asymmetric approaches there are two kinds of keys one is what is called public and the other is private okay so in asymmetric encryption decryption approaches we have two kinds of keys public key private key so everybody in the network has two keys public key private key private key is private everyone knows only his own private key consider email for example my email address is v.rafa at gmail.com okay you can uh, consider this as my public key everybody knows my public key so public keys uh, are public everybody knows the public key of each other but the password my password my password plays the role of private key only me know what what's my password okay so in asymmetric cryptography everybody has two keys public key all persons in the network knows the public key of each other the second is the private key which is really private only one person the owner knows the private key okay how it works now suppose that again Bob wants to send the message to Alice now using asymmetric um, cryptographic algorithms Bob has a message Bob has a message now Bob must encrypt the message with the Alice public key okay Bob use an encryption algorithm like RSA 
encrypt his messages his message with Alice public key as I said everybody knows the public key of other persons so Bob knows the Alice public key using Alice public key Bob encrypts his message and send message sends the encrypted this is sends the encrypted message to Alice okay now if may have access now Eve may have access to this encrypted message boss but he cannot decrypt it only only Alice can decrypt this message decrypt with his private key so Bob lock the message with the public key of Alice and Alice undoes it unlock it by her private key and this is the general idea of asymmetric uh, cryptography it doesn't matter what, what's your algorithm RSA or elliptical curve all the algorithm have the general form okay for encryption we use public key public key of receiver if I for example if I want to send a message to Zainab here suppose that I want to send a message here and I want only Zainab can decrypt my message it's just an example okay I must use the public key of Zainab to encrypt my message so Zainab can decrypt the message with her private key okay and another thing another thing now again this is Bob now Bob has a message or a not message I say Bob has a document okay Now, uh, another important thing I forgot, both public keys and private keys undoes each other. It means that if you encrypt a message by the public key, Okay, if you encrypt, you can decrypt it with private key, and vice versa. If you encrypt a message with a private key, okay, you can decrypt it. With the public one private key and public key is totally different for everyone Hassan, as you ask the answer is not only private key but also public key is different I have my public key I have my private key you have your public key you have your private key I have my email address you have another one email address okay so everyone has a different public key and private key so uh, public key and private key undoes each other okay so consider this situation Bob 
has a document. Now, Bob encrypt the document with his private key. Bob encrypt the document with his private key. And now send the encrypted document to the network. Okay. Now my question is, uh, can I say now everybody can decrypt the message? True or false? Bob encrypt a document with his private key. Send it through the network. Is it true or false? Other people in the network, when received the encrypted message, all can decrypt the message. Why false? It's true. It's true. Everyone has the public key of Bob. As I said, public key and private key undoes each other. So, since other persons, since other persons have the public key of Bob, so simply can decrypt the message, so simply can have access to document. Okay? Understand? If Bob encrypt a document, a message with his private key and send it through the network, others simply can decrypt the message because all of them have the public key. Is it really useful? Yes, it's useful because I have a document, okay? I have a contract. Suppose that I have a contract. Not only I publish the contract, but also I publish the encrypted contract with my private key. Both. What's the benefit? The benefit is that if someone, someone wants to fraud me, if someone wants to change the contract, this encrypted data prevents him. How? If you encrypt this message with my public key, you will have a contract. If these two contracts are different, so it means that someone has changed the contract. So this encryption data prevents others to change my contract. This is called digital signature. This is called digital signature. Uh, and all these concepts are used in cryptocurrencies. So if someone asks what is digital signature, digital, let me type, digital signature I will explain them through slides I will implement them through Python so don't worry what's digital signature digital signature is the encryption of a message with the private key of the publisher so publisher using digital signature publisher for example bob we have a publisher as i said for example bob publish not only the message but also the signature inside
What is signature? Signature is the encryption of the message by the publisher private key. Others can simply decrypt the signature with the public key of the publisher. If the result is different from message, it means that someone changed the message. Okay? So, uh, in blockchain, in blockchain, Each block at the first of the block there's a data. What what is the first data? The first data is the hash. You remember hash? SHA1 algorithm, SHA256. The first item is the hash value of all the previous block. So what what what, what is uh, useful? It prevents chain changing the block. If someone changed some part of the block, all the hash should be changed. It. Okay. What's the application of digital signatures? Okay. Digital signatures prevents double spending. How? Can you hear me? Suppose that I want, I have one Bitcoin. Suppose that I want, suppose that I want to spend one Bitcoin. Maybe uh, I buy something. For example, I uh, buy a laptop. Okay. When I spend this money, I put my digital signature beside. And my digital signature will be stored beside the transaction into the blockchain. So later, I can't double spend it again. I can't claim that it wasn't me. Okay? Because I, the, the owner of the private key is myself. Nobody has my private key and digital signature as i said is um, is the encryption of the message by my private key so private key prevents double spending in uh, all the cryptocurrencies okay uh, that's enough for now uh, tomorrow uh, we will have another session i will talk about rsa algorithm and later i will implement the rsa algorithm then uh, after that I will talk about algorithm uh, I will show you how to implement RSA and elliptical curve and how to encrypt decrypt how to uh, create uh, signatures verify signatures uh, we will review all the uh, libraries in the Python also uh, thank you good evening see you later bye